Welcome to Home Group. My name is Rick Renner and I'm here with Denise and we want to say thank you again for everything that you did last week and what you've been doing this week to help us prepare aid for people that have been displaced because of the conflict in our part of the world. And as we've told you, we're giving boxes of relief. They're really boxes filled with the love of God. It's food, it's personal items. Here I have a can of meat that is beef. And Denise, what do you have over there? I have rice and I have corn and I have soap. I know for a fact that I know people who've been on the road and they didn't have a place to go and they didn't have a place to stay. And when they got to the place to stay, there was soap for them there. Now, is that awesome? And you're a part of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Denise, I just got off the phone with somebody who just fled from where they are. Yes. They're on the road. They don't even know for sure where they're going. Imagine that. You don't even know where you're going to go but they're going somewhere just to get out of harm's way. And when they get there, this box of love is going to be waiting for them. We're going to make sure to make sure of that. And together with your help, we're making a difference in people's lives. And you know, the book of Jude verse 22 remarkably says, and of some have compassion. That word compassion is the Greek word Elios. It doesn't describe pity that just watches the TV and says, that is so bad. Oh my, I, I just, I cannot believe what's happening to those people. You know, it's good that we watch the news and it's glad that we feel that for people, but that doesn't change anything. The word mercy, the word compassion, the Greek word elios, describes something that moves you so deeply you have to do something about it. It's the very word which is used in Jude verse 2 to describe the mercy of God toward us. When we're in trouble, God doesn't just look at us and say, Wow, that is just so pitiful that they're in such trouble. God has mercy, Elias. He's moved to help us. God moves to do something for us. That's why the Bible says over and over, when Jesus saw multitudes and their needs, he was moved with compassion. Real mercy, real compassion moves you to do something. And the rest of Jude, verse 22 says, and if some have compassion, making a difference. Real compassion makes a difference in somebody else's life. And as you know, we've never done this ever before in our ministry, but right now we need to make a difference for people that really are displaced. And many of them are our brothers and sisters in Christ. They have fled from their homes and they need to know they are not forgotten. Just like that person I just talked to on the phone, before we walked in here, they don't even know where they're going, but I guarantee you, when we find out where they are, we're going to make sure some of these things are waiting for them. And Denise, in some places, there's no stoves. So in those places, we're providing hot meals. Think about that. Just to be able to pull up in your car or get off of your bus or get off of your train and go to a place where suddenly a hot meal is waiting for you. I mean, what a demonstration of the love of God and for every person that doesn't have a Bible, we're giving them a Bible. We're giving a book about how to repent and how to receive Christ. We're giving them the 91st Psalm and we're showing them how to connect to our online church when they can finally get on their gadgets again so that we can pastor them and teach them and wrap our arms around them. And when we wrap our arms around them, you're wrapping your arms around them with us because you're our partners in this work. And I just want to say thank you. Denise thanks you. Our family thanks you. And thank you also for asking, how are we? Well, to be honest, we're watching the news. We're watching what's happening. Every day seems like our heads are spinning with new developments. But we're very anointed for this. And Denise and I have always thrived. Our family has thrived in difficult situations. If you don't have a copy of our autobiography called Unlikely, you ought to get it and you'll find out we really are anointed for troubled times and troubled places. And we're anointed right now. And we're in the peace of God. We go to bed every night quoting Psalm chapter 4 verse 8. Some people take sleeping medication. Well, Psalm 4 verse 8 is my sleeping medication. It says, I will lay me down. That's promise number one. Then it says, in peace and sleep, 
and the Lord will keep me safely. And every night we take Psalm 4, verse 8, and we lay down in peace and we sleep and the Lord keeps us. We are living in the peace of God and we know that we are in our place. And thank you for helping us to be here. Isn't it amazing, Denise? Oh, it's just amazing. Thank you so much for all your generous, generous giving. And it really reveals your heart that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And you're reacting out of the love of God. And you know, the love of God is touching those people. It is, Denise. And Rick, I was just thinking about them receiving the Bible and, and that book and Psalm 91. And, and this is going to save their life. I mean, we're going to be here for a while on this earth, but eternity is a long, long time. And this can, when they hear this knowledge, when they understand and the Holy Spirit touches their heart, they're going to spend eternity in heaven instead of hell. Now, that's what your gifts are doing. Is that, is that fantastic? Thank you so much. You know, in the regular TV program this week, I'm teaching a brand new series called Recalculating, how to get back on track if you've messed up along the way. And from time to time, we all mess up. We just do because none of us are perfect in our hearing from the Lord yet. But just like you carry GPS in your telephone, the Holy Spirit is our GPS. And I've been amazed through these escalating events, how many people have really been led by the Holy Spirit, just like GPS, people that we've called and they've heard the Lord whisper to their heart and say, move now. Yep. And if they hadn't moved then, it would have been a disaster, but they moved because the Holy Spirit, like the GPS, is telling them what to do, what to avoid. And so for just a few minutes today, I want to talk to you from Romans chapter 8, verse 14, which is about the leading of the Holy Spirit. Reach for your Bible. I want you to see this. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And in today's program and in tomorrow's program, I want to give you two examples of moments when Denise and I were really supernaturally led. One time I didn't listen and we suffered the consequences. We're going to tell you about an example tomorrow where we did listen and we're very glad that we did. But in this verse, Romans 8, 14, the King James Version says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. It puts us at the first of the verse, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. But when you read this in the Greek text, Denise, it reverses it. It says, as many as by the Spirit of God, it puts the Holy Spirit at the first of the verse, are being led. It puts us behind Him. I say almost like we are tagalongs. You know, when I was a kid in our home, we played follow the leader. And my older sister really loved to play follow the leader when it was time to clean the house. And Rhonda would say, we're going to play follow the leader, and I'm the leader. And you, Rick, and Lori are going to do whatever I say. Well, because we were playing follow the leader, we had to do whatever Rhonda told us to do. If she said vacuum, we had to vacuum. Sweep, we had to sweep. Rhonda was the leader, and we were playing follow the leader. So we did whatever Rhonda told us to do. And I know Rhonda's watching. Rhonda, I love you. But with the Holy Spirit, we have to play follow the leader. He is the leader. He wants to be out front. He wants to call all the shots. He wants to lead us. As many as by the Spirit of God are, what? Being led. And that word led, as I discuss in the regular TV program this week, is from the Greek word ago. And the word ago means I lead. I lead. But first, it was an agricultural term which was used to describe a person who would wrap a rope around the neck of an animal like a cow or a goat, and then they would take the dangling end and they would pull and tug and they would lead that animal. That's the word ago that is used in that verse. But the word ago is also the root for the Greek word agonizo. Do you hear another word? The word agony. It's where you get the word agony. And it describes two wrestlers that are slugging it out on the mat, one trying to have the mastery over the other. And when you put all this together, you find the Holy Spirit wants to tug on our heart. He wants to lead us 
but very often it's a struggle. It's agony for our mind because our mind may not understand what we're feeling in our heart that we are supposed to do. But the Holy Spirit's tugging on our heart. The mind says, tilt, 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 I don't understand. And most often in life, the Holy Spirit does not lead us with a bolt of lightning. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. One time years ago, somebody sent me a prophecy. And the prophecy said, God has told us where the Ark of the Covenant is hidden. Well, I already knew this was going to be a weird prophecy. But when I read it, it read something like this, and I'm not exaggerating. Yea, I, the Lord, say unto you, buy a plane ticket and fly east across the sea called Atlantic, saith the Lord, and land in the midst of the continent called Africa. And I, the Lord, say unto thee, rent a car and drive north. Yea, drive north to the mountains that sit by the sea. And there park thy car, saith the Lord. Interesting, the Lord was speaking the King James translation. Park thy car there, saith the Lord, and climb the mountains. And there you will find a hole in the cleft of the rock descend into the hole and put thy hands to the sides of the tunnel and grope through the darkness. And there finally saith the Lord at the end of the tunnel, you will see a crack in the rock with a beam of light coming through it where the light falls upon the ground there. Dig and you shall find the holy ark of my covenant. Well, at the very end of the letter, which they sent to me with this prophecy, they said, we're going to come to one of your meetings in Connecticut We'll see you there, and we want to know what you think about our prophecy. Well, I thought it was pretty bizarre to tell the truth. So I was working at our product table where I was signing books. I was autographing books, and I looked over, and there was a little couple looking at me like, it's us, we're here. And they walked up to me, and they said, well, did you get our prophecy? I said, yes, I certainly did. They said, well, what do you think? I said, well, you want to really know what I think? They said, yes, yes, yes. I said, I don't think you heard from God. I think you heard from Indiana Jones. <laughs> but the reason I'm telling you that story is because many people think that's the way God's going to communicate with them. It's going to be long. It's going to be pages and pages. You Usually when God speaks to me, it's real simple. It's do this, do that, because God knows I need it to be real simple so I don't mess it up. And even if you look in Scripture, when the Holy Spirit led people, it was usually a simple word. God, make sure we understand. So usually He speaks succinctly, very clearly. And sometimes it's just a tug or a pull, which is what we get from this word ago, the word lead. Well, when Denise and I first moved to the former Soviet Union, we were living in a house on the outside of a little town. And every morning... Our neighbor, who was an elderly woman, she was a Russian, she would put on her scarf on her head and she'd go out into her yard and she didn't have a lot of grass, but she had a cow. She'd wrap a rope around the neck of the cow and then she'd take the dangling in and she would lead it. And usually she would stop in our front yard because we had a lot of grass. She'd reach in her pocket, pull out a stake, nail it into the ground, wrap the dangling end of the rope around it, slap that old cow and walk off home and leave the cow standing in our front yard. Well, I don't know much about agriculture, but that was amazing to me. First of all, it was amazing to me that the cow followed her. That cow was huge. She was old. She was frail. She was wrinkled. That cow could have knocked her flat, but it just followed her. The next thing that amazed me is once she led it to that spot, it stayed there the whole day. Denise, do you remember that? That cow would just stay there until she came back about five o'clock in the evening. She'd pull up her stake, get the rope, and that cow would just obediently follow her home. Now, that was amazing to me. And finally, one day I said to my neighbor, what is with the cow? Why does this cow follow that little tiny frail woman? And the man laughed at me. He said, ah, he said, you obviously didn't grow up in the country. He said, that cow was trained to follow from the time that it was young. It has followed and followed and followed. It would never even think of not following because when that woman has that rope and she tugs, that cow knows its job is to follow and it doesn't move until she comes back to lead it back 
home. And I got to thinking, wow, that's like us. We need to be trained to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And one reason, Denise, it's so hard for people to follow his leading is because they were never trained to do it. That we need to train ourselves, we need to train our children, that if we feel the tug of the Spirit on our heart, we need to follow him. Well, years ago, Denise and I were in Chicago in a meeting, and we went home from the meeting during the day to take a nap, and while we were there, I felt a tug on my heart that that night I was not supposed to go to the meeting. I was supposed to stay in the room, and that just felt weird to me. Like, why would the Holy Spirit tell me to stay in a hotel room and not go to a meeting? I struggled with it all afternoon, and finally when it was time to go to church, I just shoved it aside and ignored it, and we went to the meeting. Well, when we came home that day, somebody had been in our room and robbed us. They robbed us. And when I stood there in the midst of all of our suitcases that they had gone through and saw everything that had been stolen, I thought, we've been robbed. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, now you know why I told you to stay in the room. He was trying to help us circumvent. He was trying to be our GPS. He knew what was coming. He knew. He's been out front. He knows it all. He's the only one authorized to show you things to come. And he was really trying to keep me in place so that we did not experience that robbery. And Denise, I did not listen. Now, tomorrow we're going to tell you about a moment when we did listen. But my point is this, the Holy Spirit wants to lead you. Your mind may fight with it, and you've got to learn to submit your mind to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen, Denise. Amen. The Holy Spirit loves us so much. He wants to lead us. He wants to protect us. I mean, He's out there in front. He's stuck so gently, but but He speaks with authority, but He does speak gently to us, to lead us and guide us. And I, I want to be like that cow. Amen. I, I, I want to I I feel that tug. It's time for you to say this, Denise. It's time for you to do this, Denise. It's time for you not to say that, Denise. It's time for you not to do that, just like that cow. Mm. And listening and listening and giving reverence to the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life, He will never, ever, ever lead us in the wrong direction. That is so powerful, Denise. And I have to say, you're pretty obedient. When Denise and I check into a hotel, and believe me, we've been in thousands of hotels over the years because of our ministry, I cannot begin to count the times that we've gotten into the room and Denise has said, I'll be back in just a moment. And I already know where she's headed. She's headed to the front desk because she feels a tug on her heart to share Christ with whoever is working at the front desk. You have to really listen because the Holy Spirit doesn't usually jerk. It's usually a gentle tug. And if we'll pay attention, He'll lead us and He'll lead you. Now, right now, you know this week, we're providing a box of relief to people that have been displaced. In every box, there are 20 meals. A whole box is $60. Every meal is three. Some people have been giving $60. Some people have been giving a lot of money. Some people have been giving three. Three dollars is really powerful. In fact, I don't know if three dollars has ever been more powerful than right now because three dollars will put food in somebody's stomach along with a Bible, a book on repentance, the 91st Psalm, and we'll show them how to connect to us regularly so that we can disciple them and teach them the Word of God. And my friends, we're told in Proverbs 19, 17, that when you lend to the poor, that includes those that are displaced and are in trouble, you lend to the Lord and the Lord himself will repay you. God will respond to you when you do something for people that are in need. If it's on your heart to be a part of this, please join us. If it's not on your heart, if you don't feel a tug on your heart to do it, then don't do it. But if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart to be a part of this, please go online or give us a call and you can really have compassion and make a difference in somebody else's life. But we're out of time. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.